Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday there was a magnitude 4.0 earthquake that USGS downgraded to a 3.5. It was located, they said, in Parkdale, Oregon. 609 people reported feeling this earthquake. Fox News has on its website a report saying that it was a 4.0 earthquake. On the tremor map yesterday there was 562 earthquakes, many of them on Vancouver Island. And I'll bring this up so you can see the earthquakes in the Portland area and Medford area. This is just from yesterday. They don't show what's going on today. Oregon.gov has an interactive web page where you can look at the hazards for the state of Oregon for the Cascadia earthquakes. Um, just plain earthquake hazards and landslide hazards. The blue lines drawn out now show the flood hazards. And I'll take that out and I'll show you the volcano hazards. There we go. We've got Portland, Salem, Eugene, Bend, Medford. Using Google Earth, the closest volcano to this 4.0 that USGS downgraded to a 3.5 is Mount Hood. They know that the magma chamber for Mount Hood is connected to Mount Adams. Again, for Oregon, here is the Cascadia earthquake hazard and then the volcano hazard map. Those of you that live in Oregon and Washington do know of the tsunami threat created by a large earthquake. Maybe you're new to the area and you don't know about the route to take to get out of the tsunami hazard zone in case of a large earthquake. Here's one of the seismograms for Mount Hood after that magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake hit the Loyalty Islands there over by the Ring of Fire northeast of Australia. This was the 19th earthquake so far this year that was over a magnitude 6. Last year there was only 121 earthquakes for the entire year of a magnitude 6 point or greater. This earthquake made the world ring like a bell. And yes, if a fault line is ready to trigger, it could very well trigger an earthquake or even a volcanic eruption. Here's that earthquake as it came in, as it was registered there in the United States. Here we got um, Baker, Oregon and Wild Horse Valley, Oregon. USGS has two earthquakes listed after that 4.0 that they downgraded to a 3.5. A 1.4 they have listed as 3 kilometers south southeast of Mount Hood, Oregon. And then a 1.5 for Parkdale, Oregon. Again, using Google Earth, here we have Mount Hood and we have those three earthquakes. The uh, 3.5, the 1.5, and the 1.4. These earthquakes are not far from Portland, Oregon. I've covered this area about how you would have liquefaction from a large earthquake because many of the these areas where you got water have been filled in and land developed from past eruptions of Mount Hood. So if there was a large earthquake, yeah, it would turn to quicksand. The tremor map has five earthquakes listed. Let me see if I can get this to work. A 1.5, a 1.2 that USGS does not list. A 1.3, again, that USGS does not list. The 1.4 they did. And a 2.0. They did not list that one either. 562 earthquakes for yesterday. There you can see the, the date. February 9th. 1.8, 1.8, 1 1.9. I mean, there's many of them. A 2.0, a 2.1, another 2.1, 2.2. Yeah, I'll just bring it down a little bit. Try and see if there's something larger than a 
2.1. There's its location, another 2.1, a 2.2. Yeah, up there by uh, Victoria Island, another 2.2. Yeah, 562 of them. That's a lot of earthquakes. Too much work, I suppose, for them to list them all. Got a 2.1. There you go. Believe me, the scientists are keeping an eye on these earthquakes. Small clusters of earthquakes may be a warning of a larger one to come, researchers say. Most earthquakes we feel come after small ones. That's according to a new study as scientists try to predict when and where an earthquakes may occur. USGS has information about fact and fiction earthquakes. Can you prevent large earthquakes by making lots of small ones or by lubricating the fault with water? Seismologists have observed that for every magnitude 6 earthquake, there are about 10 of the magnitude 5, 100 of magnitude 4, 1,000 of magnitude 3, and so forth. This sounds like a lot of small earthquakes, but there are never enough small ones, never enough small ones to eliminate the occasional large event. It would take 32 magnitude 5s, 1,000 magnitude 4s, or 32,000 magnitude 3 is to equal the energy of one magnitude 6 event. So even though we always record many more small earthquakes than large ones, there are far too few to eliminate the need for the occasional large earthquake. Updated information about getting in a doorway during an earthquake, well evidently that is outdated advice. In the past, earthquakes in unreinforced masonry structures and adobe homes, the door frame may have been the only thing left standing in the aftermath of an earthquake. Hence, it was thought that safety could be found by standing in doorways. In modern homes, doorways are no stronger than any other parts of the house and usually have doors that swing and can injure you. You are safer practicing the drop, cover, and hold on maneuver under a sturdy piece of furniture like a strong desk or table. If in a high-rise building, stay away from windows and outside walls. Stay out of elevators and get under a table. If driving, pull over to the side of the road and stop. Have you thought about how many overpasses and roads are going to collapse during a large earthquake? This is why we have mountain building because of the stress caused by the pressure building up, pushing up the mountains. Well, when you have a large earthquake, the land drops. And that's why the roads drops, the side of the hills drops. During that last earthquake in the 1700s, they had whole islands drop and disappear. And whole villages of Native Americans vanish with those disappearing islands. And then came the tsunami. Are you prepared for the great shaking? Are you prepared for the subsequent tsunami? The roads are going to be all blocked with all kinds of debris. How far do you have to go to get to higher ground? Are you in physical good shape to make that run? They call it a bug out kit for quickly bugging out. You're not going to have time to go through your house and grab emergency supplies. It needs to be already packed and ready, either with you or by the door to grab when you run out. More than likely, you won't be able to drive a car because of all the debris in the road. Why does USGS downgrade these earthquakes? I don't know. Why don't they post that they downgraded it? So what are your thoughts? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm also on Patreon. And I'm also on Twitter. There's a lot of things on Twitter that I don't post on YouTube because of the censoring. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.